Hello YouTube, and to quote Luca C, hello to my fellow car modelers. Today we have a release from Johan of the Chrysler Corporation's turbine car. Um, back in the late 60s they were actually looking to put jet turbines into cars and make that your primary motor. So uh, Johan released this. I was not able to determine the exact date of manufacture. Um, what is great about these old Johan kits is they do come with the opening doors, they have steerable wheels, uh, fold down seats as well. So taking a look here, it's a 125th scale. Kit number for this was GC300 colon 149 and it was part of their gold cup series. Taking a look on this here, try to get it to zoom in and lock on. There we go, I will just hold there for a moment so you can take a look and pause if you want to read the little blurb. And then additional items that was functional with this model is that it comes with an opening hood and opening trunk. Um, also comes with an exclusive frame pack, the way that this is actually packed into the box, which to give you a sense of scale, I will grab another kit that I will be reviewing or another kit that I have, it is a modern release of an old kit. This is a standard auto kit box of today. So you have that, you have, you know, height is that. So it's literally about half the height of it for a pretty similar uh, scale vehicle. So let's go ahead and pop this thing open and take a look and see what we have inside. All right, so laying the lid to the side, have first the instruction sheet, which again, you have the blurb, as well as a parts list. And the nice thing about the parts list is, like what Ravel has gone back to doing now, um, it is actually what each part is. So you know that, you know, it's the windshield, instrument cluster, instrument panel. So it, it is really nice to see that um, with these. So taking a look here, finding step one, right here. So we start off with the actual build of the turbine. So it shows how the turbine was designed to work. So it gives you a little bit more history on it. And then you're building the suspension. Interior, again with the working fold down seats. Spare tire going in for the trunk. Flipping over here to the back, continue again, the actual trunk lid and the framing of the trunk lid. Rest of the interior getting put into place, drive shaft, all of the additional exhaust porting. So you gotta think this would have been a jet engine, so it would have been a lot of hot exhaust. <laughs> Opening hood. Fenders are actually separate. Um, so again, this kit is, and the, the way that this goes together, is more reminiscent of how the car was built. Um, which, again, I think for, for the time that this would have been created, which I would assume to be the mid-70s at the latest, early 80s, that is impressive to me, the level of detail, and especially seeing um, what I was able to find this kit for. So, uh, taking a look here at the glass, there's a small little scrape in it, um, but outside of that, it, glass is perfectly clear. A little distortion right on the edge, but, you know, with the curve, it's kind of expected to happen. But uber clear glass on the side panels, a little magnification, but nothing too crazy. Laying that off to the side, we'll start going down through the sprues here. So, we have our chrome tree has that huge open front grille and the iconic part about this car were these exhaust tips. Really futuristic look. Let you guys just look at that for a moment <laughs> as I was uh, taking a quick glance at the actual instruction or the actual box art. Look at the kit uh, wheels. Nice white walled tires. Taking a quick look here. Looks like had another tire go awry on me here. 
um, that these are actually labeled as Goodyear tires as well. Actually, I see the fourth tire had just fallen off that spindle. So, again, the, the sprue layout of this is just ingenious to me. So we have all of your brake drums, our brake or your wheel hubs, the actual trunk lid, just two locating marks, no ejector pins on this big old flat piece here, the actual framing for your trunk, rear, uh, rear differential, front suspension, steering wheel, Um, the seats, really nicely molded detail. It may look like there's a lot of flashing around here. That's actually part of the seat, the way that the seat is designed uh, to mimic the rollover of the... I, I believe that is. In either case. <laughs> if you don't like it, scrape it off. <laughs> Going back to you, though, we do have the hood good fabric lining, the flocking that they would have put underneath the hoods, good representation of that. Again, the nice thing, no ejector pen marks. Have this nice sprocket here, which would hold all, which basically holds all four wheels on. Just like that. Keep everything nice and together. Now the rear glass did actually come off and it looks like it had gotten stuck at some point here. I'm not going to mess with that yet. Um, not on video to try to get it off. But the, here's the main chassis itself. So you have the main rear part of the body. Nice wheel flares here. Nice kind of uh, uh, almost like a fabric for that vinyl top. Just really nice texture on that. Looking on the inside, the roof lining, there is no ejector pins on any of it at all. Like the only thing that I can see that maybe looks like an ejector pin mark is back up and in here. And I don't even know if that's an ejector pin mark or just the way that it looks. But I mean, just looking at the body itself, it, it is amazing what it looks like. And then you have your rear tail lights here. And then the last sprue contains the rest of the seats. And set that one seat, which would go right there off to the side. Have more of the vents. Again, seats, your doors. So there you go. The first time we see ejector pins, and guess what? They're getting covered by the inside of the door. These inside door panels right here. So, again, absolutely amazing detail. Your large, wide exhaust pipes that run out the back. So I'll go ahead and uh, put at least that sprue back in as there's a couple of parts that are starting to come up there. But um, as I mentioned, this kit is an amazing bit of engineering work, especially for its day and even in today's standards. To be honest, why it is that you know, uh, new manufacturing cannot reproduce this. It, it just baffles me because this allows you to have a 125th scale car that takes up the shelf space of half of, of a normal boxing. And the detail is amazing. The fact that there is not a single ejector pin on the bottom side of that, it's just, again, amazing. So hope you've enjoyed this look at a Johan Chrysler Corporation turbine car.